Hi there. So in this video, we're going to do um, problem set 10.34x number one, and we'll keep our cheeseburger at the ready, although it, I'm not going to lie, it looks kind of unappetizing to me. I'm a, I'm a little, um, my stomach's upset, and also it just looks kind of gross. Um, but if you've never had a Big Mac, they're okay. You know, it's fine. It's a cheeseburger, I guess, but you know, nothing that uh, that you maybe aren't missing. So we'll do some practice here. Um, this is a lot of this is like appreciate, depreciate that kind of thing. So um, if one dollar buys 0.5 British pounds this month and then buys 0.75 British pounds next month, has the dollar appreciated or depreciated against the British pound? And so at a root, this is really just testing like does your vocabulary work here? And so it's a little tough. Um, <clears throat> so which one became more valuable, right? Which one buys more of the other one? Um, and the answer to that is, well, the dollar, it buys more of the other ones. So the dollar went up in value. So it appreciated, it appreciated. Um, if the dollar buys six yuan this month and five yuan next month, has the dollar appreciated or depreciated? So does the dollar buy more or less currency? And well, now it buys less, so it's less valuable. So the dollar has depreciated against the yuan. If American tourists increase visits to Japan, now, here's where things are going to get tricky. The supply of dollars will blank. The demand for yen will blank. The dollar will appreciate. The yen will what, right? You know, the, or the dollar would depreciate. So up, down, appreciate, depreciate, okay? So if the American tourists are going to Japan, what are those tourists going to need? Ask yourself that question. Well, they're going to need yen. So they're going to demand more yen, right? So we're going to put an increase here. And in order to get those yen, they're going to have to supply more dollars. So the supply of dollars will increase. Now at this point, hopefully you remember supply and demand. So if the supply of something goes up, then the price of it is going to go down. It's going to depreciate when we talk about currency. So the dollar will depreciate because this just the supply went up. The demand for yen, on the other hand, went up. So the price of yen is rising. So we'd say that the yen is appreciating. If the US government significantly decreases personal income taxes, the dollar will blank and the yen will what? Now, this one's tricky because it gets you to think about like what happens? Well, if they change taxes, then that means people have more income, right? That's that's kind of more in personal income. So as an American, if you have more personal income, and let's say on average, the average American spends 5% of their income on Japanese goods and services. Well, now they still spend the same 5%, but their income is larger. And so they buy more Japanese goods and services. So they're gonna need more yen and they're gonna, they're gonna supply more dollars. So at this point, we can say the dollar will depreciate because they supplied more of them and the yen will appreciate because Americans are going to be buying more Japanese goods and services. So we kind of skip this intermediary step of the supply and demand. We're just gonna to have to think through that. If inflation in Japan rises significantly faster than in the US, the dollar will blank, the yen will blank. So this one, the prices in Japan are much, much higher. So what, what are the Americans going to do? Well, they're not going to buy as much Japanese stuff anymore. So they aren't going to need as many yen. So the demand for yen will decrease, which means that the yen will depreciate. Now, at the same time, Right? If they're not buying as many things from overseas, then they're not supplying as many dollars. And so the supply of dollars into the Forex market decreases. So the dollar becomes more valuable because the Americans aren't putting as much into the market. So the dollar will appreciate. Now you will always have an appreciate depreciate pair. So you can just, if you know one, you know the other. If Japan has a large budget deficit that increases Japanese interest rates, the dollar will blank the annual bank. So in this one, well, if Japanese interest rates are really high, then the Americans are going to look at that and go, oh, man, I, I want to put my money, my loanable funds into their market. And so they're going to end up wanting to buy Japanese bonds and they're going to want to buy Japanese stocks, bonds and real estate, financial assets. And so the Americans are going to want more of those Japanese things. So they need more yen in order to buy them. So the demand for yen goes up and that means the yen appreciates. Now, if we know the yen is appreciating, we know the Americans are supplying more dollars into that foreign exchange market. So the US dollar is gonna go down in value and depreciate. 
if Japan puts a high tariff on U.S. imports, so that means the Americans aren't going to be able to buy us or aren't going to be able to sell as much to Japanese people. So let's think about it actually from the Japanese perspective. It might make it a little easier. And the Americans are from the Japanese perspective. They look at it and they go, I'm not going to buy as much that's made in America because it's really expensive. So they don't want to buy as many um, dollar denominated things. They're not going to buy, you know, American cars and American stuff. And so their demand for dollars goes down. When that happens, the dollar depreciates because they don't want it as much. And the yen will appreciate. And the reason is, is they're not going to supply as many yen into the foreign exchange market anymore. Japanese people don't want to buy American stuff. So they don't need American dollars, so they're not going to supply as many yen into that market. When the supply of, of the yen contracts, then the price of the yen goes up. The supply decreases, price goes up. And so the yen is going to appreciate. If the U.S. suffers a large recession, a larger one compared to Japan, then that means the Americans aren't going to buy as much Japanese-made stuff. So this is kind of similar to the opposite of number four. In this one, the Americans are like, ah, oh, gee, I wish I could buy Japanese stuff, but I don't have a job. And so they don't demand as many yen. So the demand drops for the yen, causing the yen to depreciate. At the same time, they're not supplying as many dollars into the foreign exchange market because they don't need those yen anymore. So the supply of dollars is getting smaller, making the dollar go up in value and appreciate. All right, so that kind of works through without graphs what a lot of these ideas are. It can be really tough. So it sometimes is helpful to draw a quick little sketch of, a, of two graphs next to each other to help you out with them. Let's try this with two graphs. Um, exchange rate graphs for the UK and the US in equilibrium. That's what we're going to start with. And then it says, then show the effect of real interest rates rising faster in the UK than in the United States. And we're given the abbreviation um, Great Britain pound and US dollar. So we'll do over here. We have quantity of GBP, and then we have quantity of US dollar, right? Demand, supply, and always want to label these, right? We always want to label these because there are going to be two, so we have to know which market is which. Now, remember the trick I taught you of bottom, bottom. So over here, the bottom is going to be GBP because it's at the bottom. So that means the top is US dollars. Over on this side, the bottom is US dollars. So that goes on the bottom. So GBP must go on the top. And it says that interest rates rise faster in the UK than they do in the United States. So what's that going to do? Well, the Americans are going to look at that and go, gee, I really want to put my money into British loanable funds. I really want to buy British stocks, bonds, and real estate. I want to put my money in there. Well, what do they need in order to buy stocks, bonds, and real estate in Britain? Well, they need pounds. They need the British currency. So it's going to increase the demand for the pound. And it's going to cause an appreciation of the pound. At the same time, when they buy all those pounds, they got to supply more dollars in order to buy them. So the Americans are supplying more dollars, causing a depreciation of the dollar. Now let's answer these questions on here. Which country appreciates that's the UK. Which one depreciates the US? How will the change in value of the dollar affect the balance of trade in the US? So this is a depreciation. So if US dollar value goes down, we can say that US net exports will go up because now US goods and services are cheaper. And so the US, like it's going to have cheaper stuff and so the British people are going to look at it and go, ooh, all the American stuff is on sale, right? It's a little cheaper. And so it'll cause them to buy more and move our balance of trade, move to surplus. So that's usually the key phrase here. They're going to say, like, does it move the balance of trade to surplus or towards deficit? And if the U.S. is selling more stuff, then it moves the U.S. balance to surplus. What about the, U the U.K.? Well, if... The UK GBP value goes up, we'd say, therefore, UK net exports will go down. And that means it moves it to deficit, which shouldn't be a surprise. 
right? Because this is the, the current account. The current account, right? Current account is moving to deficit. And at the very same time, remember this was up here, was the Americans were buying more and more British stocks, bonds, and real estate. And so the UK financial account moving to a surplus. And remember what I taught you in that previous lecture was that you know the financial and the current accounts are gonna balance each other. And so the British financial accounts moving toward a surplus because the Americans wanna buy all those stocks, bonds, and real estate. At the very same time, the British uh, the British current account is going to move to deficit because now their 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 currency is more expensive. Okay, now the last part on here is calculating the dollar price of goods and services that are that are pretty commonly purchased by Clayton families. This is actually a joke. These are these are just extremely expensive goods and um, meatballs from IKEA, which I'm pretty sure everybody loves meatballs from IKEA. So, um, so the trick to these to be able to convert from like one price to another and like reading these is to read that like $1 is buying 90 euro cents or is buying uh, 71 pence, which is a British, it's the British penny. Um, or it's buying, um, $1 is buying 6.51 um, Chinese yuan. And it's also buying 8.31 um, um, kroner, Swedish kroner. And so the way that we do this conversion is this. This is this is how we solve these if, you, if you've never done them. You have the US dollar to euro or whatever that other currency is, right? So in this case, um, it would be, you know, one to 0 0.90. And that has to equal the US price of the good divided by the EU price of the good. And that's that's because like the ratio has to stay the same, right? The price in Europe versus the price of the US has to be the same as the ratio of these two numbers. And so if we have like one over 0.9, and we're given kind of the EU price, right? So then, you know, we're given the EU price is 13, 13,431. And we're just kind of solving here of this in that sense, right? So we can kind of reverse engineer this a little bit. And we go 0.9x is equal to 13,4, is that right? 13,41. So x is equal to 13,4,31 divided by 0.9. So the, the, the kind of trick to this is if, if you're given the price in the other currency and you have kind of the other currency's value to what your currency is, well, you could just divide it by whatever by whatever that price is, right? So um, now that, that that's a little bit harder for us to do in our heads. So we're going to use the calculator and do that. 13,431 divided by 0 0.9 is 14,923 dollars. Um, and a couple pennies, right? So that is a heck of an expensive bottle of French wine, a fifteen thousand bottle dollar bottle of wine. Um, the next one is a Rolls Rolls Royce Phantom. So let's see how much that would cost us: two ninety seven one one four pounds divided by 0 0.71, and so that would cost us four hundred and eighteen thousand four hundred and seventy dollars. And then now let's kind of we're going to go the other way, but we're still going to use the same method. How much does a one ounce of Dahong Pao tea cost? Um, so we know that it's 227,000 Chinese yuan, 227,722 divided by 6.51 is 34,980 dollars per ounce. That's some expensive tea. Um, and my understanding is that this is some very fancy tea, right? I like tea, but I'm not going to spend $35,000 on an ounce of tea, a little baggie of tea. Um, now, cut bolar meatballs from IKEA, right? In, in Sweden, they'd be seventy-four dollars and seventy or seventy-four seventy kroner. Um, so seventy-four seventy divided by eight point three one is twelve seventy-two. Twelve dollars and seventy-two cents, which is not bad, I guess, for a couple of pounds of meatballs. Um, I think it's a little overpriced, but but you know, I guess whatever floats your boat. All right, so hopefully this helps you kind of working through some of these ideas. I'll see you next time.